In this video we are going to explain how can we use these pedigree diagrams in order to determine if a specific condition is dominant or recessive, autosomal or sex linked. Now let's start with the first one. Is this dominant or recessive? To find that out we always find a couple that are both healthy or both sufferers of the condition. In this case we can take number 5 and 6, so these two individuals are, you can see, they are both healthy and they have offspring that have the condition, so therefore this is a recessive disorder, so we can say like A it's healthy and small a is the condition you're looking for, for example it can be a specific disease. Now, is it autosomal or sex linked? Sometimes it's very difficult to distinguish between those two. There are cases where both autosomal and sex linked can explain a specific pattern in a pedigree diagram. But generally to say that a specific diagram shows a sex linked type of inheritance, it has to meet three important conditions. One is that the trait is more common in males than in females. Two, if a mother has a trait, all of her sons should also have it. There is no male-to-male -male transmission. So if these three conditions are met, then it means that it's definitely sex-linked. Even if you think that both ways can explain the pattern in a diagram. Now if we look at this specific pedigree chart, it's easy to find out if this is autosomal or sex-linked because there is no chance that a healthy male will have daughters with a condition. And why is that? Because this male, to be healthy, it has to be XAY. Now, to have a daughter, it means that he has to pass the X chromosome to his daughters. So therefore, since these daughters will have the dominant allele, it means they will be both be healthy. In this case, they are not. So therefore, this is autosomal. Now let's go to the second example. So is it dominant or recessive? You can see we have two parents that are both healthy and they have one offspring that has a condition you're looking for. Therefore, this is a recessive type of inheritance. Now is it autosomal or sex linked? Of course it's autosomal because as I explained before in the previous example, in sex linked, there is no chance that a healthy male will have a daughter that suffers from the condition. Let's go to the third example. Now here, you can see that we have two parents that are both have the disease and their offspring also have the disease. Therefore, we are talking about a recessive disorder. Now, of course, in pedigree charts, you cannot be sure because if this couple has one extra child which is healthy, that will change everything. But based on what we have, we know that the condition is recessive. Now, is it autosomal or sex linked? Here, it's very difficult to determine because both types of inheritance can explain the pattern on this diagram. But, as I said, if the three conditions for the sex linked are met, then we can say it's sex linked. So I remind you that these are the three conditions. The trait is more common in males than in females, which is true here because we have five males that are affected and only three females. If a mother has the trait, all of her sons should also have it. So we have the mother here, both sons have it. We have the mother here, both sons have it. There is no male to male transmission. We cannot see that really, because here it's healthy, here it's healthy, here it's not healthy and the males have it, but this will not apply here because the mother has a condition, therefore this is overruled by the second criteria. Now let's go to the third and last example. So is this recessive or disordered? As I said, as you can see we have a healthy couple here that have one offspring that has a disease. So this offspring here will prove us that this condition is recessive. Now, is it autosomal or sex linked? Again, you cannot really figure it out because both types of inheritances will explain this pattern. So we look at the three rules that I explained before. 
Is it more common in males than in females? Yes, because you can see all males have it. Now, the second rule is that if a mother has it, definitely all of the sons will have it, but we cannot see that here because all of the females are healthy and there is no male-to-male -male transmission. So this father here has a disease and his son doesn't. So the third rule also applies. So we can say that here it's also sex-linked.